Welcome everyone, this is another video in this lecture series on the contemporary world. This is lesson number two, part two, and we will be discussing in this lesson capitalism versus socialism. Now we will begin with the Marxist-Leninist kind of socialism, the pure socialism. And so I hope that you will be able to understand what socialism is in its pure sense. Uh, socialism being a precursor and a tr transitional form of uh, economic format and political format towards the concept of communism as propagated by Marx, Marxist Leninist movement, including the Chinese version of communism under the leadership of Chairman Mao Zedong. Now, in this particular video, we will be talking about pure socialism and not the variation of socialism that is supported or being portrayed by media all throughout the world. Uh, socialism that is a combination of market capitalism. Now, socialism is a political and social economic philosophy encompassing a range of economic and social system characterized by social ownership of the means of production and workers self-management of the enterprises it includes the political theories and movement associated with such particular system now socialism actually presented an idea wherein the workers will have the opportunity and the power to control the enterprises and so it means that the management within enterprises including factor factories and other manufacturing firms should be controlled under the power and the authority of the workers themselves and in socialism there is no private property all of the enterprises are owned and managed by the government. Hence, it is a public property. It is a public property. Now, socialism has been uh, experimented and implemented in these particular countries worldwide. We have China, we have Cuba, we have uh, Venezuela, Vietnam, and of course, we have North Korea and also the soviet union which actually fell in 1991 now they are trying to perfect the concept of socialism in the context that they will implement in totality the principles of socialism and then eventually transition into communism and a hardcore communism wherein Rice were suppressed and many of the people were actually killed during the revolution that took place in these particular countries. We know of Vietnam during the Vietnam War, Cuba during the revolution that were led by Che Guevara. We have in Venezuela under Hugo Chavez and we have China under Mao Zedong and we have USSR under Joseph Stalin who was a lover of the principle of communism by Marxist-Leninist perspective. And so, socialism being the precursor to communism is a transitional kind of an economic and political philosophy. And so, those who have implemented socialism have actually had their own challenges and at some point many of the instances that these particular principles were implemented have caused tremendous pain as well as suffering among its citizens. What are the issues that are underlying socialism? Well, but before that, we will talk first of the promise of socialism. First, socialism actually provides a promise of free health care, public ownership, equitable distribution of wealth when you speak of public ownership it's the government that owns almost practically everything 
that each individual will not have sort of private property for their own free health care meaning everyone will be given free health care regardless of their status wealth race so on and so forth equality of income that everyone will be given the same amount of income and narrowing the disparity between the rich and the poor because the rich will be taxed higher and the poor will be not taxed or taxed minimally free higher education and labor bargaining power these are the promises of socialism that's the reason why this is a very popular kind of perspective as opposed to capitalism which is a dominant perspective in the economic platform in the modern time now what are the social issues in socialist regimes? Are the promises being held true and implemented in these particular countries which adopted socialist regimes? Well, actually it's not the case. Why? Because poverty is still rampant in social or socialist countries. There is, there is massive inequality between the rich and the poor and at some point there is the discrimination of ethnic mi minorities in these particular countries if you don't belong to the ruling class then you will be oppressed at some particular point curtailment of the freedom of the press and the restriction to freedom to travel just like what is happening in north korea and in some other countries in the world that adopted a pure socialist regime where there is no freedom of the press almost everything that is being broadcasted on a television is censored and is and is uh, managed and governed by the by the state agencies that is given the authority to censor this particular freedom uh, for example in countries like north korea or china perhaps you cannot publish anything that will degrade the government or at some point try to criticize the government for actions because that is uh, a criminal that is a criminal action and you could be criminally liable because of that particular singular post in social media let's say for example criticizing the government in the free world in the capitalist world you are free to criticize anyone the way you like as long as you have the reasonable backup a reason behind what you're trying to express and that is freedom of the press freedom of expression but in socialist regimes more specifically in north korea and then soviet union there is the curtailment of the freedom of the press and the restriction of the freedom to travel most especially today in the authoritarian form of a socialist government in north korea of course there are higher taxes in socialist regime because it promises free health care free education the government will provide for the need of the society and the community the, so the government don't have enough money to spend for these public services and so in return they have to impose higher taxes the abolition of the freedom to petition the government for redress of grievances you cannot petition against the government you cannot rally against the government if you think that the government has done something that is wrong and something that is not within or not in line with the principles of country or uh, principles of human nature at that particular point then you are not allowed to petition for change in the government you are suppressed at some point in airing your grievances against the government imposed and sanctioned abortions there is a limitation on how many children you can have and so if it exceeds the limit automatically you could be at some point sanctioned for abortion meaning your 
child will be aborted and you will undergo punishment that has that has happened in china in their one child policy and now two child policy meaning if you do not obey the government for for not having so much children then you will have repercussions of your action it's either you will be criminalized you will be stripped of your rights or probably you will be sanctioned under abortion clinic so that your child under your belly under your womb will be aborted criminalization of divergent gender identity meaning those members of the lgbt under socialist regimes you are not allowed to be uh, able to express whatever gender identity you have just like let's say for example it is a criminal in the soviet union at some point it is not allowed in china it is not also allowed in north korea and some other socialist regimes restrictions of women's rights in these particular countries there are limits in women's rights there are limits on what women can do censorship of the, of the censorship in the media and the web of course we can observe that in china alone and in other socialist country there is a restriction of the freedom of the flow of information on the media and in the web because as i have told you just a while ago there is a there is a curtailment of the freedom of the press meaning all of the things broadcasted on the national television or posted in the web are actually controlled by the government there are even instances that even posting memes in the socialist regimes are actually criminal in nature there is a criminal liability attached to it and so if you are caught posting memes that destroys the credibility of the government you can be arrested and fined probably jailed for some period of time oppression of the ruling class the problem with socialist regime is that those of the higher level of the hierarchy in the society will remain there in fact those who are at the top will still continue to oppress those at the bottom especially those at the top of the government hierarchy because in this case the government has a control of everything all the need of the people and so those who control the power of the government has the power to control the populace at the bottom level of the hierarchy and so the ruling class in this case are not the private citizens with a lot of richness and money the oppressive ruling class are those that are in the government the elites in the government which has the authority and the power to control whoever it is at the bottom of the hierarchy in the society and so socialist regime still have an oppressive nature and oppressive ruling class in this case it's the government and the government employees and government workers including those leadership from the top of the government itself now let's go to the adversary perspective on what socialism is and that is capitalism capitalism is an economic system based on private ownership of the means of production and their operation for profit central characteristics of capitalism include capital accumulation competitive market a price system private property and a recognition of the property rights voluntary exchange and wage labor now in capitalism this is opposed to socialism and this is adopted by united states france united kingdom japan canada and germany and almost all majority of the countries worldwide is adopting capitalism because it actually allows private ownership of properties and the means of production is under the authority of the one who established the business itself and the purpose of that particular business is for profit who would want to start a business without thinking of profit and increasing what you have invested of course that is some kind of a silly thing but 
That is what is happening in socialist regimes. A central characteristic of capitalism includes capital accumulation, meaning accumulation of the money and the means of starting a business, competitive markets because there are more private institutions that are within that particular market, price systems, so price will vary on depending on the competitiveness of a particular market, private property of course, and the recognition of property rights. There is also voluntary exchange and wage labor. In socialist countries, there are actually no established labor, labor standard because you only have to bargain and negotiate with the owners of the company or the government for that matter. And so that's the reason why there is a bargaining agreement between the workers and the owners or the managers of a particular factory or company. Now, in this case, under capitalism, there is a wage labor, meaning there is a, an established standard of which you have to pay for the laborers itself. Now, what are the promises of capitalism? Now, capitalism promises the freedom to earn, private property, prosperity, equal opportunity, unlimited potential, and continuous generational progress. Now, one of the most important thing in capitalism is the concept of continuous generational progress. What does it mean? Well, it simply means that if, if your father have done so much to prosper, you will start at the shoulder of your father. And then you will continue on building your wealth towards the future. Meaning, the progress is generational from your lolo, from your grandfather, to your father, to you, to your sons and daughters for that matter. And in that particular way, there is continuous progress by generation. The government will not interfere in your plans as a family towards particular progress and so if you are doing well today your children will no longer undergo the same hardship as you have as you had in the past and so that's the beauty of capitalism now social issues in capitalist regime still or more or less the same with the socialist regimes although there are no curtailment of freedom but poverty is still in there. And inequality between income of the poor and of the rich are huge that there is a th uh, clear manifestation of the fact that income inequality exists in a capitalist regime. There is still an oppression of the ruling class. But the ruling class in this case is not only the government but the private sectors, those who are rich, those who are at the highest pedestal of success with a lot of money and billions in their pockets. And so they are the one at some point oppressing those that are at the bottom, especially by investing in the third world countries and exploiting labor in, in countries which don't have the opportunity or the option to choose another form of job and so because of that they they just spend a very limited amount of money to pay for the laborers in a previous discussion we had there is an example of a an industry in bangladesh wherein one month of work actually is equal to one day of work in the United States. And so that is a, an inequality in the context of the capitalist regimes. Of course, it is also at some point very apparent in capitalist regimes that there is a higher instance of graft and corrupt practices. 
there is graft and corruption in almost all capitalist regimes in the world, even including the United States. So there is graft and corruption. Although there is also an instance of graft and corruption in socialist regimes, but probably because the society is is uh, censored and the media is censored, that's the reason why we don't have the opportunity and the power to know whether or not these particular things exist. But one thing for sure, because there is freedom of the press and freedom to know the the nature of the government government's action and anything that pertains to the budgeting and the fiscal management in the government in the capitalist regimes that's the reason why we can easily pinpoint craft and corrupt practices now the differences between capitalism and socialism number one capitalism is an economic system where the means of production are owned by private individual meaning you can start your own business and hire people now in pure socialism the means of production such as money and other form of capital are owned by the state or the public meaning the government owns everything in a socialist perspective second is companies live by profit motive they exist to make money all companies have owners and managers under a socialist regime, everyone works for wealth that is, turned, that is in turn distributed to everyone. And so everyone has to work. In a pure socialist perspective, even if you don't work as hard as others, you will receive the same as others. So meaning if uh, you are an opportunist in the context of the socialist perspective, you will receive the same as those who are working so hard. In the capitalist perspective, that is not the case. If you don't work hard, you will not receive any. If you work hard, the society will compensate your hard work. And so the more you work, the more money you have. The, more, the lesser you work, the lesser opportunity and money you will have. Under a socialist perspective, that is not the case. Whether you work hard or you work less, you will receive the same because it will be distributed to everyone in an equal manner. Now, it is the government's job by enforcing laws and regulation to make sure that the level of the, that there is a, a level playing field for private property run companies. Meaning, the role of the government is to balance the situation wherein the the field is equal in the in the case of people who are trying to start business whether or not you are a huge company or a small company the role of the government is to make sure that there is no imbalance in the in the implementation of the laws and the opportunity that is available in the socialist perspective the government decides how wealth is distributed among the people because they provide for the people. At the end of the day, it's the government that decides how the wealth will be distributed. And so that's the reason why there is a danger with this particular kind of perspective. Because there is an opportunity that those at the top will be deciding for their own and neglecting those at the bottom with no opportunity to grow whatsoever because you are restricted to work under a government institution and provide and the, and the government will provide for your own need and that is a problem in the socialist perspective now if you look at the levels of wealth by country on a household basis you will actually observe that those that are at the top of the hierarchy of the richest wealth by person in every household in 2018, this is by Visual Capitalist website in the internet. You can, of course, search visualcapitalist.com. You will actually observe that 
Australia, the United States, Canada, Japan, United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy, being a capitalist country, actually produces higher average wealth per person in all countries in the world. Meaning, there are more rich people in a capitalist country than in a socialist countries. And so that gives you an idea what is the best form of government in the world. The best form of economic platform in the, in the world. Because, you know, by these statistics, you will certainly determine that at the end of the day, it's, it's the source, uh, is the wealth distribution per household that matter. And so in this case, majority of those at the top are actually capitalist countries. Now, there is also a common ground of which capitalists and socialists meet, and that is the Nordic model. The Nordic model is a combination of social welfare and economic system adapted by the Nordic countries, meaning those at the northern portion of the European continent. It combines the feature of capitalism such as market economy and market efficiency with social benefits such as state pensions and income distribution, also known as the Scandinavian model. It is commonly associated with the countries in Scandinavia like Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, and Iceland. Now, these particular countries actually adopted a certain kind of uh, model wherein there is a social safety net wherein those people at the bottom will not be will not be uh, sunk to the to the very bottom of the poverty line but there are there are social programs that actually create a safety net that those people not go beyond so deep down to poverty and so the no the nordic model actually produce a a kind of a model wherein there is still capitalism, the respect of private property, there is a respect of, of market economy and economic efficiency, of course, with the concept of socialism, wherein there is free health care, free education, and almost free everything under these particular countries. But that is not provided with the these particular citizens without a price of course there is a price for that there is a price to pay while it is true that many of the people in the united states especially bernie sanders a senator in the united states who actually provided an idea that the scandinavian country or the nordic model is a socialist kind of a government well the Prime Minister of Denmark, in his speech in Harvard's Kennedy School of Government, actually said very carefully and addressed the American people on the misconception that the Nordic model is a form of socialisting, uh, socialism, stating that I know some of the people in the U.S. associate the Nordic model with some sort of socialism, Therefore, I would like to make one thing clear. Denmark is far from socialism or socialist planned economy. Denmark is a market economy. In effect, the Prime Minister of uh, Denmark said that they are not a socialist country. Instead, they are a capitalist country because they have... Uh, free market enterprise they have private properties although they have social programs but that's, that does not make them a socialist country because it's not the government that owns everything it is not the public that owns everything it's the private institutions and private people while it is true that they have these social programs that provide free education free health and almost everything that is basic is a free service from the government it 
comes with a price. Now, if you look at the price to pay for a Nordic model, this particular image that is shown in your screen at this particular moment is a in, is an income tax percentage per country in the world. And so, if you look at Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, the citizens in these countries are actually taxed as high as 57.2%. So, every $100, you have to pay $57 to the government as taxes. In Finland, there is 56.95% of your income tax. In Denmark, there is 55.8% of your taxes will go to the government. And so while it is true that you will receive public services from the government, imagine 57% of your income will go to the government. And so the Nordic model might be a good thing to hear because the government have been spending so much for social program, it comes with a high price. And that is more than one half of your salary will go to the government as taxes. Now, if you want a socialist kind or a combined socialist perspective of government method, be ready to provide your salary, at least one half of your salary to the government. And if you're not ready for that, let us just enjoy a capitalist country like ours in the Philippines, in the United States, in Japan, and in so, in so many countries in the world where freedom to earn and ability to prosper is guaranteed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something in this lesson. See you in the next video.